everybody. I talk to developers all day long, and in my time at Oculus, I've seen a lot of success stories. Like developers who go out of their way to engage with the VR community where they live in real time. From hosting dedicated AMAs on the Oculus subreddit and chiming in on relevant threads to Twitter polls, screenshot Saturdays, and more, small indie devs and larger operations alike have found ways to tap into the passion of existing fans and followers while also attracting new ones. Of course, for every success story I've seen, there's been a dev or two that missed the mark. Whether it's opening pre-orders without making some noise, neglecting to put together a trailer, or generally launching into a vacuum, it kills me when Oculus devs leave a good opportunity on the table. Which brings me here today. I want to help you understand the tools that are available to you as Oculus creators and developers and how to maximize your promotional pot potential. You don't need to be a community manager to find ways to manage your relationship with the VR community in a way that's mutually beneficial. Of course, having a dedicated community manager definitely helps. So let's get started. As developers and content creators, your number one priority is delivering the best VR game experience or app possible. But just like it's the content that sells hardware, it's the story you're able to tell about yourself and your product that will, ultimate, that will ultimately drive conversions. So where do you start? If you're working on a narrative-driven game or experience, that'll probably play a key role in any story you decide to tell, as may core mechanics, uh, the genre within which you're working, your artistic influences, etc. But oftentimes, the real story is you. Maybe you're a small and scrappy team that formed within a larger gaming peripheral company as an experiment, or a pair of siblings who decided to build something together, or romantic partners who started with a shared dream and built out a studio from there. All of these are real examples from the game industry, two of which are actually VR specific, and all of them are compelling narratives that people from all walks of life will eat up. A great VR experience might very well sell itself once people get their hands on it, but a great story can help you sell your product sight on scene. Once people buy into you, they're far more likely to follow along and check out what you have to offer. Did you incorporate a new rendering technique or solve a particularly challenging design problem? Are you using AI or procedural generation in a new and interesting way? VR enthusiasts are tech savvy early adopters so the more that you peel back the curtain on how the sausage is made, pardon the mixed metaphor, the better. Not only do these sorts of stories increase the likelihood of press coverage by virtue of presenting a unique and newsworthy angle, they also help distinguish your signal from the noise of competing releases in an increasingly saturated market. There's also the cool factor. Did someone from your team come from a really big name studio? Are you leveraging really well-known IP? These are all things that you want to call out. Don't be afraid to have that coolness by association. Speaking of which, make sure that if there's a cultural shorthand that you can fall back on, that you're doing so. If a picture is worth a thousand words, think of, of how powerful saying this is X meets Y in VR, or this is like a mashup of A plus B can be. Not only is it going to help press and the community get a better understanding of what your project is in a shorter amount of time, you might also see that same language picked up in the coverage that your experience gets, which ultimately will drive better um, recognition for your brand and your product. <coughs> Sorry. Of course, you can come up with the most compelling narrative in the world, but it won't get you very far if you're unable to convey that story to an engaged audience. And one of the easiest and most effective ways to do that is through visuals. Of course, there are a lot of different asset types and your budget, unlike your creativity, is probably limited. So what are the musts? You need a trailer. It's great if you happen to have the resources to have multiple trailers produced, but you need at least one. And did I mention that you need a trailer? It honestly bears repeating. If you can only allocate your marketing budget towards a single deliverable, that should probably be your trailer, because you need one. Beyond the trailer itself, showing off actual in-app footage is one of the most effective ways to get your audience's attention. Short clips, GIFs, more in-depth let's plays 
All of these are great, great ways to engage the community. You might tap an influencer to produce a Let's Play for you, or you could do one in-house, which gives the community a nice behind-the-scenes perspective. People eat that up, so dev diaries, day in the lifestyle videos, any opportunity that you have to let the community feel like they have an insider access to your studio is something definitely worth considering. And while video tends to perform best in terms of engagement across a wide variety of social channels, static assets are gonna be a must as well. So there's your key art, um, screenshots, concept art if you have it, especially if you go in a really edgy or unusual direction, all of that is stuff that you can leverage on social. <clears throat> of course, you can come up with the most compelling narrative in the world. Sorry, I went backwards. Here we go, bear with me. Okay, so in a perfect world, each VR title would have multiple trailers, an early teaser, one for the official announcement, one for your release date. Um, of course, all of that adds up. So you might consider prioritizing the launch trailer since that's the moment with the strongest call to action for the community. And then you can work back from there to melt some additional mileage out of that larger asset. Can you take the full trailer, say 90 seconds, and come up with a way to get creative, a 10 to 15 second cut down that teases the full reveal without giving too much away? Congratulations, you just got two trailers for the price of one. Also, pay attention to asset requirements, which vary by platform. So for example, Twitter has a shorter video length than you're going to be able to accommodate on Facebook um, or Instagram. So that's something you wanna plan for in advance. So I want to briefly touch on Reddit. Um, how many of you guys are active in either the Oculus subreddit or a subreddit of your own? Awesome. So some quick do's and don'ts. No astroturfing. If you're gonna be involved in this, the Reddit community, whether on Oculus or elsewhere, you wanna make sure that you're being authentic. So you're a developer, you're a creator, announce yourself as such. Don't pose as a fan, but instead be upfront about who you are. Uh, hosting AMAs is a really great way to engage with the community and get them excited about your project. Um, also good to engage in relevant threads. Pay attention to the conversation. Don't just self-promote, but give something back to the community and answer their questions. <clears throat> All of this can help people feel like they're heard, even if you don't take actionable um, feedback and incorporate that feedback into your end product. Just the fact that you're engaging in the community goes a long way towards making them feel like they're part of it and along the journey with you. So that also speaks to best practices across channels. If you're working on Reddit, for example, there's a specific way that you want to engage with that community. On Twitter, press is going to be much more active there. It's much more real time and engaging in conversation versus something like Instagram where you can afford to be um, much more campaign based in the sorts of posts that you're making. So you really wanna make sure, excuse me, that you're tailoring your behavior to the channel and the audience. So as far as working with Oculus, obviously we have limited resources as well, but one thing that you can do that's an easy win for everybody is tag us. If you have an announcement that you're making and it's something on the platform, if you go out of your way to tag our channels, we're able to surface that information in a much easier way. So it helps us help you to get your story out there. So that about covers it. Wanted to go ahead and open it up to Q&A. Um, I'm very, very hot and very, very pregnant, so apologies. But um, there's a microphone, I believe, right up here if anyone has any questions.